Hey, this is John Carlos. Now, there have been many Batman black and white statues by DC Collectibles, but I'm really excited that there is now a black and white Harley Quinn statue. Based on her look from Batman the Animated Series, designed by Bruce Timm and sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. So let's go check this out. The statue comes in two pieces, and it assembles like that. This is an easy statue to review. The long and the short of it is that I like it. I like it a lot. Now, there are a few nitpicks I have with it, which I'll get to in a moment, but I just want to lead off by saying how much I like Harley Quinn in Batman the Animated Series. I think what Bruce Timm and Paul Dini did in creating this character was nothing short of genius, and I really hate what's kind of become of the character in the video games in the New 52, like, Suicide Squad comics. I don't like her in a corset, I don't like her with her blonde pigtails, with the ends dyed red and black. By getting rid of the Harley Quinn outfit, and ruining the pun of her name, Harley Quinn, and instead going with a, like a dumb goth girl look, which nothing about her should be gothy, I think just kind of ruins the character and betrays it all. So I'm really happy that we have a classic, original, and in my opinion, real Harley Quinn statue. Now the paint is where I have a few nitpicks. I mean, for the most part, the suit is clean, like the overall black and gray. The gray which would be red had this been in color. Uh, what I want to point out to you are the diamonds. Most of the diamonds on this statue are not perfectly filled in to where their sculpted shape is. You can see this diamond doesn't fill in the gap there. Also, this uh, little floppity thing that hangs over her, her cowl of sorts, you can see does not fully match the sculpted area there. Also, on her left bum cheek, you can see that diamond's not fully painted in. See a similar thing on her thighs here. I mean, they're not fully mispainted, like, they're not shaped like circles. They are diamonds, but they do not line up properly or bleed over past the line. DC does some great work with sculpting, but they don't always do best with paint. Like, you can see right here, the black does not fill in the edge of her shoe all the way. But at least they got her face right. I mean, that would be a real bummer, but the, what they did with her eyes and the eye mask is all really clean work. Even the little dingly danglies at the end of her, uh, her mask, the white doesn't bleed over too far, and I think they did a great job painting her lips. I really like the sculpting on the statue. If you look at the way her hips lean to the left, and the way her shoulders lean back, and her hips are rocking forward, there's a lot of good attitude in this pose. There's a lot of good Harley Quinn-esque personality in this pose, and I really dig what they did. And I think they did a great job sculpting her face. It certainly looks like Paul Dini's art. But what I really like is the little, like, groove lines that they've included. Uh, there's these little, like, artistic lines that you could see on the original box art, including this little line by her knee, and I like that they included these little kind of drawn-in lines. But her pose is great, even just the way her arm hangs, just the lines of her elbow and shoulder, the way she's holding the gun, the way her lips are blowing it forward. Really good work. Speaking of her lips, there's one thing I want to point out, and that is there is a little nick in my statue, right at the middle of her top lip. Um, it's kind of annoying. It's not an artistic line, like the one on her leg. It's clearly something that shouldn't be there. And it bugs me, but also, literally, if you stand a foot away, don't even notice it. So that's not too bad. I also like the way that they painted her uh, gun to be kind of shiny and shimmier. It looks more animated and more cartoony. And I like that it's a different uh, scheme than the rest of her. It's more glossy. Now that we've had a clear look at her face, I can connect the smoke attachment piece to her gun. Now I held off on this before because I wanted you guys to have a clear, unobscured look at her face. And not because I didn't see it in the styrofoam box and just happened to notice it now. Yeah, that's it. Paint on this statue is decent. There are some nitpicks to be sure, but overall I'd say the paint scheme is more than serviceable. Where this statue really succeeds is the sculpt. I think they did a great job sculpting a really great Harley Quinn pose. In particular, I like the way they sculpted her face to be blown out the smoke on her gun. Now this thing retails for about 80 bucks, which is a pretty good price, and if you're interested in getting this, I recommend you run out and get it soon. These Batman black and white statues tend to sell out pretty fast. I regret not getting the Mike Mignola Batman statue when it first came out, because that thing costs a lot on the collector's market now. In fact, this thing pre-sold out on a lot of web stores, and they're already making a second version that comes in a slightly different, bluer paint scheme. So if you want this original paint scheme, you should go out and get this soon. I'm really glad they included Harley Quinn in the black and white statues line, and I'm really happy to include this in my collection. Thanks for watching.